Tenka. Tenka is a quite light game by Victory Point Games, pretty much a filler. It was originally published in a Ziplog, a Ziplog bag edition, and now we have a much better looking edition, boxed edition with a gritty components, nice cards. It is a card game, and well, in its boxed edition, really, it looks good. Also, I really like the art on the cards. Nice looking game, but of course you are going to want to know how the game plays, not just how it looks, otherwise you would go to a museum if that was the only thing you were interested in. Okay, how does it play? Each player has a display such as this one that represents the court of the player. Because in this game players represent the feudal lords in Japan that are struggling to gain power through several means, to various combinations of military, political means, religious influence, and mainly control of provinces, which is one of the things that you need to control in order to win the game. In the middle of the table, you place that at a display there, which has a track with numbers from, from 5 to 1 descending, and you place that token there on top, number 5, I will explain later what that is for, and then you have a deck of cards that you use to form the draw pile, you also have an air for the discard pile there. At the beginning of the game, each player draws eight cards, then each player places three cards down around their court. I place four here just because, I don't know, uh, well, four to explain several things about the game, but it should be three at the beginning of the game. As you can see, the court has colored bands around it that match the color of the type of cards that you will place in each area corresponding to each band. It is just a way to organize cards consistently. Here, red, you place the military cards, here you place the lords, here the priests, and here yellow band, the provinces. Also something pretty cool is that the main deck will change from game to game because in each game you will shuffle into the deck a selection of special cards, which are purple cards. They can be particularly powerful, there is quite a large selection of cards, but you draw only a number of them randomly, you do not look at them, you shuffle them into the deck, which is what I already did, these are the cards that, have, that are left behind. This means that no two games will have exactly the same decks and that will prevent counting cards and things like that. Then players start taking turns. In a turn, the first thing that you do is you check to see if you have one. And you win if you have a number of province cards in your court corresponding or exceeding the number indicated by that token there. At the beginning of the game, that is five. You need that amount of cards, of province cards, and you need to have more provinces than anybody else. You do that, that is your situation at the beginning of your turn, you win the game. Of course, like in other games in which you check for victory at the beginning of the game, that means that the opponents uh, will try to gang up against you. If you end your turn in a situation in which you could win, then you may expect all of the other players working together before uh, the game goes back to you to change things so that you will not win the game the next time that you take a turn. When the draw deck is exhausted, the draw deck is reshuffled to make a new draw deck, but at that time also you move that token down by one box. That means that after the first reshuffle, the uh, players will only need four provinces and to have more provinces than anybody else to win the game, then three and two and so on and so forth. Another way to win the game is to collect the three special cards, the three regalia cards that are particularly valuable, but precisely because of this, as soon as you play them, as soon as you show them, the players start, will start fantasizing about taking them from you, will start trying to figure out ways to take them from you. That is, of course, the danger. But if you have all of those three special cards in your court, then you win the game immediately, the second that all three regalia cards are in your court. So. First thing you do in the turn is to check to see if you have won the game. Then your default turn sequence is that you draw a card and that you take an action. This default thing will be modified by several factors. For example, when you're drawing cards, you will draw an extra card for each province that you have in your, in your 
court. However, that doesn't mean that you will be able to retain all of those cards. You look at the cards, all of those that you drew, including the extra ones, but then you can retain only one. If you have more priests in your court than anybody else, then you also draw an extra card and you get to retain an extra card. Then you take your action, but if you have more lords in your court than anybody else, then you can uh, take an additional action this turn. What are the actions that you can take? You can pass, I think that's pretty self-explanatory. You can pitch a card, that means you play a card for its pitch effect, if it has one, and the card is then discarded, you resolve the pitch effect and that's it. The card isn't used for anything else. And some of these pitch effects are pretty good. You can place a card, that simply means you take a card from your hand and you place it in the correct area of your display, or you can start a battle. Yay, battles! Uh, you will need to have soldiers in your army to start a battle, and when you start a battle you discard a card, just to represent the expenditure of resources of starting a campaign against another player. You declare the player that you are attacking and other players have also the opportunity to participate to the campaign. That is, they can do so by pitching military cards in the advantage of the attacker or the defender. When you pitch a card during a battle, the battle's called, called to arms, that is when you go around the table and you ask players if they want to contribute, then that adds two to a side's strength. Otherwise, knights that are placed in your court are worth one. So suppose that I have four knights here. Um, then another player wants to help me, pitches a card. Now it's four plus two because knights are one when placed and two when pitched, but then they go away. So now I have six. Then I play a card for myself and I have a total attack of eight. The defender also gets a chance to uh, to pitch a card. Uh, at that point, the defender well will choose what to do. Maybe the defender will lose the battle anyways and decides not to do anything, or wants to lose the battle in not such an awful way as he would otherwise. So he start he, he tries to defend against the battle anyways, because at the end of the battle you compare the total results, which if they are equal. Uh, nothing happens, the, the battle is a draw, there are no further effects. If one of the two sides has a total higher amount than the other, that side is the winner. If one side has a higher total strength than the other side, that side is the winner, that side is the loser. The loser of the battle takes a number of casualties equal to the difference between the attack strength of the two sides. I'm attacking with 9, the defender defends with 6 points, the defender takes 3 casualties. Each casualty is satisfied by the loser of the battle by discarding a card from his hand and if the loser doesn't have enough cards then the loser has to satisfy the remaining casualties by discarding cards in his court. So actually having extra cards in your hand even though they may not be totally useful is a good way to put a buffer between you and the opponents because that will allow you to discard cards as casualties from your hand before you get rid of cards that you really want to keep in your court. Now, if it was the defender that won the battle, well, that's it. At that point, the battle is over. The defender has effectively defended his land. If there's some casualties on the opponent, there is already enough to celebrate. But if the attacker wins the battle, then actually it is even better because on top of inflicting casualties, the attacker also gets to choose one or two options. The attacker may choose to take into his hand one of the casualty cards that were, dis that were discarded by the loser, or may choose to take a province from the loser. Then come may not rock your world, change your vision of gaming forever, uh, 
like light fillers usually don't, don't do that. But what it does as a light filler, I find that it does well. Uh, this is a game that I definitely enjoyed. Uh, similar to what happened to me recently with Nile Deluxer, it is a game that we started playing as a filler and before we knew, knew it, we were playing a string of games one after the other, really enjoying each of them and really enjoying trying to experiment with different strategies game after game. I like the fact that there are many possible paths to victory, even though after a while some players start uh, feeling particularly good about certain strategies and they may tend to go for those, but then you don't get the cards that will allow you to implement those, then you have to work around a different set of cards that you received. But I really have seen sometimes uh, very balanced strategies work, some of the times incredibly specialized strategies worked. I played game in which I won using only the military and provinces, even though I have to say that that was not, oh, I found a way to break the game. I still felt I was very close to, uh, to lose my my advantage a couple of times uh, and I saw a couple of mistakes that the players made. Uh, so I definitely like this. Interaction is immense. I mean, ways of winning the game are always relative. If I steal a card from you and then I destroy your card there and I do that other bad thing to the other player, I may win the game. So interaction and very confrontational, very cutthroat. At the same time, uh, a little bit of diplomacy will be required when you will try to convince other players to pitch a card in your favor uh, during a battle. And that may be the same player that you just heard a second ago and now all of a sudden you say, hey, you want to be best buddies? You know, let's, let's be friends and why don't you pitch a card for me? Uh, you have to do a little bit of that. You have to uh, be a little bit um, blunt, hypocritical, political. Choose the word that you want. I think you got the concept. Um, I see that this is a game that some players have played with two players only. I saw comments about that online and usually those players seem to be disappointed with the game and I could totally see why. This is a game for three or four players and I definitely would not recommend playing it with two players. Even with three, at times it can be a little shaky but it still works. In most of the cases, I think four is really ideal. Why so? Because, as I said earlier, players need to uh, slaughter each other all the time, but they also need to work together. If you have two players only, one player against an earlier adva advantage because of a lucky draw, well, that a player will not be able to recover from that. With three players, usually two players ganging against the player that gained an early leadership may still work, uh, may still manage to uh, steal the leadership and keep things in the balance. With four players, the interaction is much more balanced and yes, it is much harder to emerge as the only winner, even if you got a good initial setup. This is possible, of course, if the players work together against whoever is emerging as the leader, while at the same time in the back of their mind and trying to figure out a way to emerge as leaders themselves right after they put you down. So, light filler, but fun one. Uh, a negative, the only negative is really that it cannot be played with two players, and, and that, of course, is a limitation. Having the two player options is always good. That is the only thing. Otherwise, for a three, four player card game, light filler, not super thematic, but with interesting mechanics, good hand management problems, by which I mean issues, challenges, not the game seems to have mechanical problems per se, but you will have to face problems to make the mechanics work, and that is the fun challenge. So overall, I enjoyed Tanka. Certainly a light filler, but one that I found to work pretty well, and one that I enjoyed playing.